Hi, uh, James is here for clubjade.net. I'm here with Maya Catherine Bonhoff in Conjecture Concord in San Diego. Uh, how are things going here at the con? Oh, they're going great. It's yep. really been a fun convention. Yep. And so not only are you a Star Wars author, but you're also a Filk author. Yep. Filker. <laughs> Filker. Excellent. Uh, so, music, so, yeah, music and music and writing. Music and writing. So, so what types of panels have you been on here at the con? I have been on both writing panels and um, music panels. Um, just on a, a panel on uh, doing folk music in non-folk venues. So, like doing folk music in karaoke bars, let's say, okay. or libraries at book events, or in the classroom. One of our members is a, has been a teacher for many years, so he mm -hmm. was doing his uh, folk music in the classroom with the kids, teaching them the periodic table. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. And uh, one of your um, Star Wars books coming up is going to be next year's The Last Jedi. Can you tell us a little yes. bit about that? Um, it is the fourth book in the Coruscant Nights series, which mm -hmm. um, was started by Michael Reeves, and Michael and I have done the last two books um, together, The Patterns of Force, the third book in the series. And, this fourth book that was not really planned, but um, Del Rey shot us an email and said, hey, would you guys do another book in the series? And uh, so we said, well, sure, we'd be silly to turn that down, right? Yeah. <laughs> they ask you to do a book. So um, so this is a, another one with Jax Paven as the main character, and of course this, this uh, I can't call him a sidekick, his friend and companion, the, the droid, mm -hmm. um, I-5 by Q. I-5 I is one of my favorite characters. I love I-5 like a transcendent <laughs> character and I think that's one of those clever things that Michael did with with the series when he started it was giving a, a character that could be around for I think I-5 has been around through like over a 20 or 30 year period with um, with this, this group of people he started out actually with Jack Paven's father right Lauren Paven and um, and it was my wiped and then you know has managed to get his whole memory back and he's very unusual for a droid he has a force signature which we found out in Patterns of Force, yeah. that I-5 has a Force signature, and no one really quite understands why that is. But, um, but it does play a part in both Patterns of Force and in The Last Jedi. All right. Um, so, Last Jedi, because it's kind of been, you know, you weren't planning on it originally, mm -hmm. um, what, what, what ground are we going to be treading into? Well, Michael had pitched an idea to, um, to Lucas Books for it, because he had a, a kind of a cool thing he, he wanted to do. And they said, yeah, sure, you know, go ahead, yeah, we'd like you to do that. You know, they basically came back and said, yes, please, can you do that? Um, and what it is, is basically, it's called The Last Jedi because Jax isn't sure that he isn't the last okay. Jedi in existence. Mm -hmm. um, his master has been killed, um, you know, he has nobody else around, and he's trying to fight the, 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 the evil empire, you know, right. if you will. Um, pretty much by himself with the group of, of Whiplash. And, and, and so in the book, it's sort of like everything that has to do with Whiplash and the resistance that Jax is involved in kind of comes to a head. Okay. And we also find out about some of the things, the artifacts that Jax has been kind of toting around with him and he's acquired over the series of books. There's a, a Pyronium um, gem that he's got that was given to him by Anakin Skywalker that you kind of find out what that's for. And um, he's got a Sith holocron that was uh, passed down to him, came through his father. And so those are kind of things that, that were coming now to a head in this book and finding out. So we've, we've planted these little MacGuffins and here they yes, are, they're, they're coming they out. Are. They are finally coming out. Yeah, so. Does one of them crack open is really a dragon? No. no okay. No. It's not exact. There will be dragons, but not that kind of <laughs> Um, yeah, so we find out some, some interesting things, and then the I-5 character kind of comes along a little bit more, and things just sort of come to a head. Okay. Uh, any, any cameos of other characters that we might know coming back? Uh, yeah. Um, you know, there's the Black Sun contingent mm -hmm. that, that shows up, and, uh, and of course, you know, you have to have Darth Vader. Yeah. Um, so, and that really kind of comes to it. I mean, in Patterns of Force, Jax began to kind of put two and two together and realize that Anakin Skywalker was Darth Vader. Right. And so that kind of comes to a head also in this book of his... his and what is he going to do about that? Oh, we shall see. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And then um, last year uh, you also worked with Michael on uh, Shadow Games. Uh, yes. Yes, we did. we did. Shadow Games came out in November of mm -hmm. last year. Yeah, last year. Yep. I know. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I came out in November of last year and had a most marvelous cover. I was so thrilled. That cover was, I don't know what artist, I, I forget the artist's name, but it's just wonderful work yeah. uh, that they've got happening now, sort of surreal. But that was a lot of fun to write. Yeah. It really was. I enjoyed that immensely. And it was a chance to see Dash Rendar really on his own with his own crew. Yes. Doing doing what he does and, and really highlighting that hey he's you know I think when when Dash was first introduced we we're like hey he's like Han Solo light but now here he is doing his own thing and we can see where he's different he's his own character yeah. and his friends and and colleagues and you know it's his own adventure and so I thought yeah. that was really cool. It was very cool to be able to build a backstory for mm -hmm. him. Um, with a lot of research, I had to do a lot of, of, you know, going out online, looking at other materials, you know, finding out where he had been. I collected a whole bunch of different images of what different people thought, you know, the card game people and the comic book people mm -hmm. thought Dash looked like. And I kind of picked one, you know, to, to be the Dash that I was imagining. And then being able to take the little fragments that you find out about his family and stuff and build them into, you know, a whole backstory for him that plays a part in, in what's happening in the Action to the Shadow games. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then trying to differentiate him from Han Solo. Mm -hmm. I loved being able to write the two of them on, on page or on screen right. together, um, as it will. Because the Han Solo piece came about almost by accident. We were, were we had started to do the outline and I kind of said gee could it um, you know would it be nice to, to have a character maybe do a cameo or something and and our editor um, Shelley Shapiro who's a marvelous editor said gee could you guys you know could you maybe fit like one of the main characters in like a Han Solo or something because this isn't the right time frame could you maybe do that and Michael said fit him in <laughs> you know we'll put you'll just be you know, we'll be a cameo we're gonna put right. him in the book and that was, I think, one of the coolest things was being able to write Han Solo and then write him and Dash together and, and draw a distinction between the two, mm -hmm. working off their backstories, really working on the kinds of lives these two men have that make them so different. Right, and I think one of the cool things about Dash it, that, uh, you know, again, with, with I-5, Dash has got Lebo on his side, and, yes. and Lebo is a also a unique droid character. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah. He was programmed by a, a stand-up comedian, <laughs> yeah. for one thing, and and then something that Dash is constantly having to remind himself of during the run of the book is, is that when Lebo smarts off to him, it's his programming. It really is just his programming. He isn't really thinking for himself. This is the way he's been programmed, and what he really means to say is, you know, yes, sir, but he can't say yes, sir, so he says something smart-ass instead, you know? And, and so Dash just has to take the brunt of it. Yeah, he just sort of has to take the brunt of it and go, you know, he, he'd like to, to throttle, and so his, his second-in-command, his navigator, um, Eden Grill, who's mm -hmm. a Nautola, is constantly reminding him, you realize you're arguing with the machine. You know, that this is, you know, why are you doing this? And, and that's something for the readers, you know, kind of to forget that we, because the droids we're most familiar with are their own characters, and they're not just machines, and yet yeah. realizing that droids are machines, and yeah. so that that's yeah. a, a good balance. And it's it's also important in in this case, it's important to the plot that the reader understand the limitations of programming and mm -hmm. how far that goes, because it really plays a very important part in right. how the, the plot results. But, and I don't want to say more than that because there are a lot of people out there yeah. who haven't read the book, but by all means, go out and read the book. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so, um, and then... <laughs> <laughs> Hello, when people come up, uh, pat you on the head. Pat like me that. on the head, yeah. That was uh, Patrick from Mysterious Galaxy <laughs> making his cameo appearance in this interview. Um, and, and then uh, also, you know, alongside Shadow Games, there's the short story and Lebo Makes Three, where yes. we see Lebo uh, meeting, you know, Dash and Eden for the first time in their, their first little misadventure yes, the first together. together. Yeah, that was one of the things of, that was a very fragmentary piece of mm -hmm. Dash Rendar's history in the. Um, the literature that I was looking at in the card game and the video games and stuff, because there was this little thing about the stand-up comic. We didn't know where he was from. Um, we didn't really know what, you know, how he got in. You know, it wasn't. You can't say he won him in a card game because that's how Han Solo got right. in Millennium Falcon. And so it was fun to just kind of play with that and, and set up a little story. Basically, just to see them meet. And that was something again that the editor said, "We'd really like to know what that story is. Would you be willing to write a short story?" to have this anthology. Okay. Oh, very cool. Which was nice. Yeah, it was in Star Wars Insider, and then it was just yes. put into the uh, yeah. the 2012 Del, Del Rey sampler that they're giving out yes. at the convention. So. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's really fun. I have to say, I really enjoy doing 
the research is fun and working with, we've got a couple of people at Lucas Books um, who are just marvelous resources that, you know, when I wanted decided that we wanted to use Bannistar Station mm -hmm. um, and we wanted to put some of the action there for Shadow Games, there was very little known about the place, but it seemed like a really cool place, you know, to us. We thought it was just really kind of neat. But nobody knew anything, so um, I was leaning really heavily on the Dan Wallace, who uh, was one of the people that did the, the guides, mm -hmm. um, talking to them and, and uh, Leland Chi at, at uh, Lucas Books, you know, to try to come up with as much material as they could. And ultimately, it was like, well, we don't really have that much information, so punt. <laughs> right. And I thought, great. So it's kind of cool, and you feel like you're describing a place. And it's be going to go into the literature. It's going to go into, you know, it's going to show up on Wikipedia. You there know, we go. Place else, right? <laughs> well, very cool. Are there any other projects you want to tell us about that you're working on? Um, no, we got any st other Star Wars projects mm -hmm. right now. Um, but I do have a um, a reprint of a, a my first fantasy novel is going to be coming out in an ebook in um, let's see, when is it? I think it's May of next year. And uh, I also have uh, some things, just, I'm part of a group called Bookview Cafe, uh, which is an online cooperative of uh, professional science fiction, fantasy, and actually romance writers as well, uh, and historicals. We just do all genres. Uh, Vonda McIntyre is a, a member of the group, Ursula Le Guin is a member of the group, and I've got um, several books out there that are in different genres, science fiction and fantasy and magical realism. And people can go out and check out um, in ebooks, and also have a, a, book, a story coming out in an anthology called Future Games, which are sports stories with a science fictional. Interesting. Thing, Interesting. Cool. Well, it sounds like you got a whole bunch of cool stuff coming up uh, down the pipe soon, and I appreciate you taking the time today, Maya. So thank you very much.